Food Heals Podcast, episode 212. Take a step back to observe your feelings and then the thoughts behind those feelings, to explore them, to allow negative emotion sometimes without acting on it, and then learning how to turn your thoughts around. I'm far from perfect, and here's why, and all these people can now relate to me, and I can help because I've been able to take it to the next step. Let's go deeper. Let's get still enough. Let's have the courage to go with in go into it because if you face the monster you're going to find there isn't a monster there and then you can learn that underneath that is just love holistic voice presents the food heals podcast with your hosts allison melody and Susie hardy join the food heals nation and learn the secrets to go from feeling unwell to healing yourself Warning, side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, an increase in sexual activity, feelings of joy, cravings for kale and quinoa, and a spike in Tinder matches. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to put in their Lululemons and take a yoga class while drinking a green juice. If you experience any of these symptoms, text your priest immediately. All right, welcome, Food Heals Nation. Thanks for joining me. I'm Allison Melody, and today we've got an epic episode for you where I sit down with two of my favorite plant-powered natural chicks to answer all all of your burning questions. We've got Ella Major. She is the sexy fit vegan online and she came to LA to visit. We had an awesome time here in the studio and Ella strives to empower people to build a plant strong body, heart, and mind for life. Plus, Gorgeously Green's Sophie Uliano stopped by and she gave us all the goods on what brands to buy that are ethical, vegan, non-toxic, and of course, gorgeous, and green. She's a board-certified holistic nutritionist, yoga teacher, and wellness educator. And today, these plant-powered blondies are answering your most frequently asked questions about health, wellness, beauty, and more. And speaking of health, wellness, beauty, and more, Food Heals Nation, it's swag bag time. Do you want to win a gift bag full of our favorite organic, non-toxic, healthy vegan products? Sure you do. So our swag bag contest, it's back. And here is how to enter. Step one, leave us a rating and review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts. Step two, screenshot your review and post it online to Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Tag at Food Heals Nation on any of those platforms and then use the hashtag Food Heals Swag to make sure that we see it so it can be entered in to the swag bag giveaway. The winning 10 reviewers will receive a gift bag shipped right to your door with some amazing products. Like I can't even tell you, but I'm going to go through some of these because they are so Fabulous. We've got Zatik. They sent us serums. You're either going to get the Gratitude Face Serum or the Nutra Face Serum. Oh, I tried them both and they're both just luscious. We've got Veg News Magazine. It just happens to be one of the issues that we were featured in. Thank you, Colleen. We've got Vermont Soap. You're either going to get their African Shea Butter or their Oatmeal Lavender Bar Soap. Both are fab. We've got gorgeous, huge, welly water bottles. We've got the natural dentist sent us peppermint twist anti plaque rinse with aloe vera. We've got probiotics from Thrive. You gotta get that gut healthy. You know how important those probiotics are. We've got beautiful Axiology lipstick. You know, Erica, she's been on the podcast before. She sent us some gorgeous colors. We've got Four Stigmatic. That is the coffee alternative that all the plant powered people I know are obsessed with. You're trying to kick that coffee habit, but you still want that energy boost. You're going to get either the mushroom coffee with lion's mane and chaga, or you're going to get the mushroom hot cacao mix, hot cocoa mix, basically. We've got a B4 vitamin supplement, orange flavored, my favorite flavor. It's what to drink before you drink. So it cures hangovers before they happen. We've got addictive wellness elixir blends. You know them from the Food Heals podcast. So many times Sage and Ana Blanca have been on this show. Drop in wisdom. So you're either going to get the caramel, the chai, or the cacao elixir blends. We've got Banish. Banish is a new one for us that I'm super excited about. You're either going to get their Banish face oil or their Banish pumpkin enzyme mask. So excited about those. You're going to get coupons for Mac and Moe's products. You're going to get 
all natural pre-workout and fat burning supplements from WM Nutrition. So hopefully those will get you excited to leave us a review and enter to win the swag bag contest. You know what to do and good luck to you. Next up, my interview with Ella Majors and Sophie Uliano. The Food Heals Podcast starts now. She is the best-selling author of the Gorgeously Green book series who personally taught Julia Roberts and Oprah how to go green before going green was cool. She's a regular here over at Food Heals. Please welcome today's co-host, Sophie Uliano. Hello. I am so happy to be here. We are so glad to have you. And she has been named among Shape Magazine's top 50 hottest trainers in America. She's pretty hot, you guys. She's author of the book, Six Weeks to Sexy Abs meal plan. You may remember her from multiple episodes of the Food Heals podcast. Please welcome today's guest in person, in studio, Ella Majors. Thank you for having me back. You're welcome. It's so great to see your shiny face in the studio because you live in Miami. We live in LA. So the last couple of times we've done this, it's been online, on Skype. So I'm so happy to have you in studio. I, it's going to be so much fun. I can't, it's so different than doing it that, across the country. It's so much more fun because you can look in each other's eyes and like have true conversations conversations where sometimes you're on Skype, you don't know when the next person is going to talk or crack a joke. (laughs) Yes, there's a weird sort of delay. Also, I have to say that there's some serious like jelly going on here because look at the body on you, Uh Ella. (laughs) I mean, you look amazing. And that's something that you wouldn't see over Skype. I mean, she's cut this girl (laughs) with gorgeous tattoos and she's so cool and she's got the kind of Miami sort of tan and you look just awesome. Oh, you guys, I'm like blushing here. <laughs> Don't make her cry. I didn't give her any wine today. So, <laughs> or any beer. She's a beer girl, right? Oh, uh, tequila beer. Yeah. Tequila beer. Yeah. yeah. I was listening to our last podcast to prepare for this podcast. So, I remember you were talking about um, your local hangout and, yeah, the vegan eats there and how you really have veganized Miami, a couple of spots there. So, that's really awesome. So, if you're listening right now, you have heard Ella and Sophie on multiple episodes on the Food Heals podcast, but never together. So yay. Yay. Very exciting. (laughs) Super exciting. Yeah. So I encourage everyone, go back. You can hear Sophie on episodes 178, 185, and 200. We've got Ella on episodes 97, 169, and 170. So go back to hear their full stories. But today, I really want to dive in and ask these ladies some of your burning, frequently asked questions, questions that we get a lot that I want to get other people's perspectives on who are smarter than me, like these beautiful blondes next to me. (laughs) So we're going to tackle some topics you've been asking about. But first, ladies, just remind us a little bit about who you are and what you do. So I've been vegan myself for 23 years. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, (laughs) vegetarian for 30. I think you beat everyone in this room. Yeah, you do. (laughs) It's not a competition now, but okay. (laughs) But you win. But I win. (laughs) Um, And I I have an online coaching program. I I help people transition to a healthy, fit, vegan lifestyle, really uh, all about empowerment and aligning your actions with your values. Having fun with it. Yes, and you've got your beautiful book, Six Weeks to Sexy Abs. Yes, all about convenience, too. Like, I want to make this doable for anybody. Accessible. That's something you both have in common, because Sophie also wants to make the diet and the lifestyle really accessible and easy for people. So, Sophie, remind everyone who you are and what you do. Well, I am an author. And I have four books and I help women. My passion is to help mainly women. I run retreats and events to turn their lives around. So it's sort of wellness and beauty from the inside out. Yes. It's a holistic approach. I'm a nutritionist and I'm a green beauty expert and I just love what I do. And I love inspiring women to be the healthiest and most beautiful that they can be. Yes, and that's why I'm obsessed with both of you, and I'm so excited for the blonde power in the room today. Woohoo! Yeah. So I want to take us through some questions, but first, let's go Facebook Live so that everyone out there can get a little taste of what we're talking about today, which is answering your questions. Number one, sweat it out daily or do what I can when I can. How much exercise do we truly need, and what do I eat after I exercise? A protein shake, a meal, a juice? Help! What do you guys think? What I would say about that is it it really depends on what your goals are. You know, if you're looking for long-term health, we're going to 
be talking about um, maybe lower impact, you know, longevity. It depends if we're looking at that or if you want some results quickly, you know. So it's really first always important to take someone from where they are, look at what they want, and then find the path to get there. So for me, I really, I'm a kickboxer. I love the high intensity. I could do it every day. I have to pull back because you can overtrain. And then I have to throw in the yoga. So I'm really about the power of yoga. So finding that balance um, and then looking at what you want. So for me, those two things together, doing the kind of boot camp style and the yoga together, that's the combination that works for me. And so it's about finding the combination that works for you. I love finding balance. That's something Mm -hmm. that I am working on every day. And Sophie, what would you say? I would say that, as you know, Alison, I'm obsessed with evidence-based science. Yes. So what I do is I dig in and I look at, okay, what is the the current science telling us that is the optimum amount of exercise? So this is more less about the kind of exercise and more about the duration. Mm -hmm. So interestingly, the latest evidence-based science says that it's not 30 minutes a day, as some people used to say. It's not 40. It's not 50. What is it? (laughs) It is 60 minutes a day. Oh, I thought you were going to say 20 and I was going to be like, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It's actually 60. And I think that this is actually really important because look, Ella, you clearly are a, an exercise queen and you love your exercise and you do your kickboxing. But I think for some people who don't have that kind of impetus to get up and do that, I think it never hurts to be reminded that we live in a sedentary society, particularly here in LA. We're in our car all the time or we're behind a desk. And for health and longevity, for our heart, for cancer, for prevention of disease, we really have to get in an hour a day. But... That doesn't have to always be all in one shot. Yes, good point. That's the thing. You can break it up. I think it's great if you can get it in one shot because then you get that high intensity, that hit workout where you can, that's great to do that. But in a push for me, like on a busy day like today, 10 minutes in the morning, a bit of kettlebell, bit of walking, you know, high intensity walking with the dogs. You know I'm obsessed with my kettlebells. I have one by the door. 30 kettlebells, you know, bit of a yoga, and then it's done. Yeah, and I love that. And one of the things that I do is I love to take my exercise classes. Everyone knows I'm obsessed with Pilates, but I can't always go every single day. I can't always drive there, park, go for an hour, you know, drive home. It's a lot. So on the days when I can't, I love to break it up just like Sophie said. So this morning, here I am, I'm prepping for Ella's interview because I know we haven't talked in a hundred episodes, right? Wow. Has it been that long? I mean, (laughs) since your first one, we haven't had a deep conversation. So her first episode was like literally a hundred episodes ago or so, give or take. So I was listening and we were talking about exercise and I was like doing all my hardcore stuff at that time. And I was like, I can hold a plank for two minutes. So I heard myself say that and I laid down and I was listening to the episode and I went there and I planked for two minutes. I'm like, if I can do it, if I say I can do it, I'm going to do it. And I did it. And at one minute and 30, I wanted to quit. I was like, mm. good for mm-hmm. you that you did it. I did it. I went all the way. And look, that's two minutes out of my day. Afterwards, I felt stronger. I felt more motivated. Two minutes can do so much in your day. So if you can't do 60 minutes all at once, you can break it up throughout your day. Get up and take a walk. Get up and take a jog. I used to think if I jogged for two miles, I was failing because I wasn't going for five and I wasn't good enough. No. Mm-hmm. Great. Do something. I feel like yeah. being active. Um, yes. Yeah, just active. active. Yeah. And active. the other thing that that is also, uh, the other day I did a lot of spring cleaning and I got on a roll, uh, like I was ripping through my house and I was cleaning windows and, yeah. and <laughs> li- you know, literally up on ladders and getting under. And I broke a sweat. Heart rate was up. I was hauling boxes down from the attic. I tend to be a little obsessive like that. It's kind of all or nothing. But the fact is that I got more exercise that day than I would normally, or certainly as much as quite a heavy workout in the gym. Right. So I would also say, you know, think about integrating exercise. It doesn't have to be gym, Pilates, kickboxing. It can be like we used to do back in the day and some of the healthiest populations where they just kept very strong through using their body to do what our bodies were designed to do. Yes. Exactly. Exercise doesn't have to mean going to the gym and lifting weights. It's being active and using your strength and your muscles and you start to sweat a little bit, you know, then you're, you're doing it. Yes. Could not agree more. Okay, next question. And this is straight out of our Facebook group. She says, 
I have a very important question. So I like it when it starts like that because we know. Oh, we this know. This is a big one. Yes. I like to drink a glass of red wine every single day. Do you think I could ever lose weight with such a habit? I've tried abstaining, but it usually backfires on me and I gain weight because I'm so sad that I eat all the wrong things. I love to eat healthy. I don't eat sugar. I just need that glass of red. Thank you in advance for your thoughts. Huh. Great question. <laughs> I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I have my beer like we talked yeah. about. <laughs> I love strong, dark Belgian beer, and I'm all about intuitive eating as well. That's kind of my my big thing to help people learn to use your knowledge, first of all, of, of plant-based nutrition, so get educated, and then learn to listen to your body and yeah. get really in tune with what you need. And so for me, I have my beer on the weekends, you know, and I know I'm not going to feel 100% the next day. And I do it consciously, though, as long as I'm making a conscious decision. And on those days, something that I've learned that works for me, I drink green juice. Yes. Like, I will drink green juice (laughs) all day and then go have my Gardein uh, wings, which are crappy. Right. Yeah. (laughs) Sorry, Gardein, but they're like crap. Yeah, junk food. It's junk. Um, Better than meat. Delicious. Better Better than than meat. meat. Yes. Better Better than than meat. meat. But not a clean apple. No. Not at all. <laughs> uh-uh. Not no. at all. But I, I balance, you know, balance, there's that word yeah. again. I think that's such a key yeah. thing to find your balance and, and do what makes you feel good. And that means physically, mentally, emotionally, socially, spiritually, you know, there's yeah. so many different aspects of feeling good. And so we need to explore and find out what all those aspects, what we need to do to, to get happy in those ways. Wow, Ella, <laughs> why haven't I met you I don't before? know. I, knew I just this feel is gonna like... Be good. I just feel like we're just the same person. It's just, I love you. I love every single thing that's come out of your mouth. I can't even deal with it. I'm going to come. She lives in Miami, so I'm going to be visiting you in Miami. Because as we were chatting before, I'm obsessed with Miami. So, yes, I 100% agree with you. Listen to your body. It's all about being connected, not disconnected, and not always relying on what other people are telling you as good, bad, whatever, All even the sort of health experts. And I would say to that question is enjoy your glass of wine. Enjoy yes. every moment of that glass of wine. And again, when we look at all the healthiest populations throughout history, red wine actually is, and evidence-based science tells us that red wine, you're on the right thing, girl, there. Because <laughs> if you were saying a vodka or a gin or a whatever, red wine is the one alcohol that, that, that would be a good thing to drink. I don't drink alcohol just because it doesn't agree with me. I'm a kombucha girl, but, you know, if that's what you love. And also, your wisdom is coming through in that question anyway, because that was such a wise question, because you said, you know, I stop. When I don't allow myself that pleasure, I start to do the things that I shouldn't be doing. And you've nailed it. Everybody has the answers deep down inside of them anyway. But just trust that, of course. If I don't allow myself to have gardein every now and again, or whatever it is, or a bit of vegan junk food, or if I'm so completely sort of uh, rigid, I'll set myself up to fail. Right. Thousand percent. Exactly. I love what comes out of your mouth too. (laughs) (laughs) I love bringing plant-powered ladies together. And so I think I love this question and I responded right away because I have a lot to say about this because my whole thing is like, do as much as you can. I am plant-powered. I eat fruits and vegetables all day. And if I'm going to drink wine at night, I do just like Ella said, I try to do as much as greens as I can so that I can have that wine guilt-free and enjoy it because wine is celebratory. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I want to say is we had Dr. Stephen Cabral on, and he is one of my favorite functional medicine doctors. Amazing. Yeah. Ugh. And so knowledgeable. And he also is all about the evidence-based science. And what he said about alcohol was, you know, red is better than white. Anything clear when it comes to liquor is the best, tequila, than vodka. So just try to choose the healthiest one you can and don't feel guilty about it. Because when you feel guilty about what you're doing, then it changes the cellular makeup mm-hmm. of your body. Absolutely. And so the food will affect you differently. The alcohol will affect you differently. So if you're doing everything else right, Drink your wine and enjoy it. And if you're listening, you're like, I don't even need wine. Maybe it's something else you have. You're like, oh, I have to have my... Mine's chocolate. Yes, exactly. I have to, every night, she said every night she likes her glass of wine. Every night I look forward to my dark chocolate. Yes. And it's delicious. And I'm a great connoisseur of vegan dark chocolate of mm. every, in every variety that it comes. Just a little bit, but it just, that just sort of tops the day for me. Yes. 
All right, I want to move into sunshine and vitamin D and all of that. I have three questions that have come in lately, so I feel like this is a hot topic for Food Heals Nation listeners, and it's summer. So let's talk about this. You know, is the sun the devil that is giving us skin cancer? Do we need that vitamin D? Like, let's talk about this. So I'll ask you the questions, and then we can just go through it all. Let's just have a conversation. So what's the deal with SPF, sunscreen, and the sun? Is the sun giving us skin cancer, or is the sun good for us. Then I have another question. Can anyone recommend a good suntan lotion without chemicals? Going to Florida soon and definitely need to stock up. And then I have another woman in Santa Monica. She's actually a friend of mine and she's by a stroke of irony. I live in sunny Santa Monica, but I have a vitamin D deficiency. What supplement do you recommend? So let's talk about sun and supplements. I know. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, I'm (laughs) sizzling with excitement on this one. All right, I'm going to try and make this as quick as possible. So the first thing is, no, the sun isn't the devil incarnate. And again, the regions of the world that are closest to the equator tend to have the least incidences of cancer, which is why all the studies have been done on on vitamin D and how very, very, very important it is that everybody takes two to 5,000 IUs of vitamin D every single day. Now, this is going to depend on where you live, what hemisphere you live in, how much sun on non-sunscreen skin you get. It also depends on how old you are, because as you get older, your body is less able to synthesize the vitamin D in your skin into vitamin D or usable form of vitamin D. So as you get older, you need more of the supplement. Here's how I do it. I love the sun. I've been a sun worshiper my whole life, oddly enough, coming from the UK. (laughs) But when you live in the UK, you're so starved of sun that you become obsessed with it. And every summer we'd go to Italy or France and we'd literally lie there, baby oil on the face, aluminum foil completely behind my head. We did this too, growing up in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I'm blonde, right? Talk about sun damage. Sun, you know, infrared. I had sun beds like this close to my face and all the rest of it. So I did have quite a lot of sun damage. But I do think that a little bit of sun is is healthy. And I know this because, again, Ella, we're talking about that listening to you, the wisdom in your body. And it feels so good to lie in the sun. And when you've been on vacation, you're laying on a hot, sunny beach, it feel, because your body it just feels amazing. So most of the time for me, because I'm vain and because I don't want to get, because UVA and UVB, UVB rays, every dermatologist will agree that that is what will age your skin faster than anything else. So for that reason, I kind of regret the foil and the baby oil, but that ship has sailed. So um, what I would recommend is for me is that I wear sunscreen religiously on my face and my arms and my hands and my chest. Non-toxic sunscreen. And it's completely non-toxic. So it's mineral. So it it actually, technically, it would be a block, not a screen. Because if it's mineral, which is obviously zinc and titanium dioxide, it's like a coat. It's like literally putting clothes on you. It activates immediately. Unlike the chemical ones, you don't have to wait 30 minutes before you go in the sun. It's instantaneous. And the real key with it is that you have to reapply every two hours. You just have to. Actually, I just gave you that powder. Yes. Because Alison's about to go to Italy. And so um, I, I was saying to her that, you know, after you've put the sunscreen on your face in the morning, for me anyway, so I'll do, you know, all the routine, lots of really good sunscreen. And then as the day goes on, because I have to re- reapply every two hours, I don't want to put more goop on my face because I've got my makeup on. So I gave Alison this thing called by Color Science, which is a stick, a powder stick. And it's actually pretty cool because it's SPF 50. Five zero, yes. so it and it's water resistant. Although I will say that the SPF numbers and the whole water resistant labels are very, very tricky, mm-hmm. and we could do a whole podcast on that. Uh, but over <laughs> to you, Ella. What, what's your take on it? Well, I have a lot of the same uh, kind of uh, habits and theories. I of course, cover, she does. Yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> I am same way with my face. I cover my face with a hat. Like I'm very, now, of course, when you're in your like younger years, you're not thinking about that. But we're all blonde, blue eyed. We're sitting here. (laughs) Yes. So I am super careful with my face. I make my own sunscreen with coconut oil and the 
Zinc oxide. Yes, I, zinc oxide. Wow. It would probably be zinc oxide because I do okay. DIYs as well, and it is. It's zinc oxide is the easier one to buy as a powder. Powder, yeah. yeah. So is I this an either just, of your books? Because whoa, I need this right now. <laughs> it's on my YouTube channel. Okay. What about you? I don't know where it is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Doesn't matter. I'll try to get it and post it in the show notes. But no. I know where yeah, you're I'm about so to go. <laughs> Were you about to say that you can sprinkle the zinc oxide in a moisturizer? Well, I just uh, put the two together, coconut yeah. oil and the zinc oxide. Okay. I mix it up, and that's my sunscreen. Oh, I love like, it. Like, I mean, it doesn't get more simple than that. Oh, my and it gosh. works. And let's bust a myth right now, because I swear, I had a bunch of girls with me, and I was like, coconut oil is a sunscreen, and half of us were fine, and half of us got sunburned. So then yeah. they were like, Ali, your sunscreen doesn't work. Like, coconut oil made us burn. And I was like, no, you got burned because you have different skin, and because you are probably, I'm not trying to be rude, but more toxic. So what happens <laughs> is you're <laughs> really. The sun, the sun brings toxins to our skin. So the healthier we, healthier we are, the less um, burn that we're going to get. And yes, we have fairer skin. So fairer skin people will get more sunburn. However, the more toxic you are, that is what's going to come to the surface. And so it is a learning process of figuring that out. So wear the sunscreen, wear the non-toxic sunscreen. But also it really does depend on what you're putting on the inside because it will come to the outside. And it's interesting that the, the skin cancer rates are rising despite the use of sunscreen right. escalating. Right. So those two things are kind of interesting, which is obviously, you know, that attributed to the chemicals in the chemical sunscreens, many of which are found to be endocrine disruptors, as well as having other issues so much. I love your coconut oil zinc oxide That's, in it. It's, does it <laughs> isn't that ridiculous that we don't know about that yeah. and we're using all these yes. chemicals? Right. I, it's just unbelievable. There's no reason for all the chemicals, and we don't want to put more toxins in. And there are so many sunscreens on the market that are full of ingredients that don't put on your kids, don't put on your fair skin. And for me, I was a sun worshiper too, just like Sophie, and we were in North Carolina, so we grew up in the same town, and it gets hot there. Um, We laid out at pools. Two hours away was the beach. We would go to the beach, and we were like, how can we get as tan as possible in the least amount of time? (laughs) <laughs> and so that carried on even into my 20s and early 30s. And so Me too. All of a sudden, I yeah. saw, I have a picture of myself, and I didn't realize how bad it had gotten. And my husband has been with me for, we met 10 years, more than 10 years ago now. And I have... Fre- nothing wrong with freckles. If freckles are adorable, but yeah. these were like dark, sunny yeah. freckles. They were not They're pretty. It's, it's they not- were not cute. Yeah, they were different. And so I was covered in brown spots. Yeah. And it took me a period of time, which I would say actually probably around a year, but six months at a time kind of doing different things. First of all, wearing a hat, keeping my face out of the sun, wearing a sunscreen-based moisturizer moisturizer before I put on any makeup. And then I did some hardcore laser treatments and vitamin C treatment. Mm -hmm. And that is how I now have a decently clear face. Beautiful skin, yeah. But if you saw the before picture and you were worshiping the sun, you were in a tanning bed this close to your face and you had beautiful skin. (laughs) You Okay, so my first job was at a tanning bed. Wow. (laughs) Oh, my God. When I was 16 years old. So they started calling me names at school. They were not like, I I can't even say Okay, I have to tell you that not only this, my best friend, Melina. Hi, Melina, if you're watching. I love Melina. Melina, right. Mel and I. We would go to such lengths that we would take these pills, right, that had carrot extract in them. So we had orange palms of our hands. We looked like (laughs) Ompelongos. Plus we were puce red from the suntan use. I mean, on and on. Fake tan. I mean, what were we... What? (laughs) I just don't even know. But anyway. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's move on. I want to get into something and it may make Food Heals Nation blush, but that's okay because I want to talk about it. We get this question and I think it's important. It may make Roxy blush. It may make Tiff blush. (laughs) We shall see. But colonics and enemas, hype or healing tools? I'd actually love to hear what Sophie thinks about this because I, I'm one to really um, look at all the different theories. And most of the clients I talk to are like, I am so confused with all the conflicting information, right. like so overwhelmed. You've got doctors saying, in doctors with research, and there's always research to back it up, yeah. doctors saying that this is like life-saving, and then there's doctors saying this is going to kill you. Like it's so confusing, right. and it really is. Right. I, is it natural? Is it unnatural? You know, there's I did a lot 
you once. School of Thoughts. Okay. I did. I did. I've done, I've once. done once in my life as well, and it I don't was feel like I need I it, it. anymore. No. I, I mean, because I eat clean, I just don't feel like I need it. And I know there's lots of things that can happen with them, and the drying out and taking out the your microbiome and all the messing things up. Right. What would you? Because you're well, I feel the same way as you. Obviously, we're, we are the, <laughs> You're same, the same person. We're the same person, and I'm going to surprise you with my opinion. But, Go on. But I feel that. If you're healthy, if you're eating a whole food plant-based diet and you're feeding your body full of all these incredible nutrients like green juice and all the stuff that we eat, I think the most important thing, the foundation of good health is is your microbiome. Yes. Your microbiome is in really good shape. It worries me to start pushing hot water or whatever they push through in a colonic through. I was so scammed with the colonic I had. It was one of these total scammy kind of holistic, it was back in England. So it it was one of these places, it was one step further than crystal healing for your, you know, whatever. (laughs) I am actually generally not a huge fan. And I know that a lot of There are places here in LA that offer these kind of extreme detox programs for people a lot of the time who have just abused their bodies. They've been on a bender and they're just, and and you see this cycle in LA happening a lot where people go, we go, I'm not going to mention some of the places, but we go to wherever it is, there's two or three spas close to LA and they're on this complete detox, you know, juice fasting, colonics, blah, blah, blah. And I just, I don't know. I don't, maybe it's the British in me. Maybe it's the common sense, the down to earth. I just, it does, doesn't jive for me. I think our bodies naturally detox so beautifully and we can assist that our body to do that in a way that's gentle through, you know, foods, through having beets and, and, and those certain vegetables which help our liver, even herbs like milk thistle and, you know, and probiotics and prebiotics every single day. And the only thing that I will say that I really don't know that much about, so I can't speak to this, but it interests me, is this isn't uh, colonics and it's it's a sort of a little further than enemas but have you heard of the fecal transplants oh no I mean vaguely but I don't well, know enough about vaguely it vaguely too for yeah. me okay I just saw it on 60 Minutes this whole thing about somebody who th- these people who had been extremely sick and they did this fecal transplanting thing and what happened okay, yeah tell it well <laughs> first off the, the, the entire process I could barely watch the TV because it was what did they show on the TV well they showed <laughs> They showed a man who was taking bags of the fecal matter from somebody who had a good, strong microbiome, taking it home to his apartment, and it showed him how he would then, you know, with a tube and everything, up it went. Wow. And he was really, he was cured of some horrible, horrible disease through fecal transplantation. So that's very interesting to me. I'm open to anything that is helping people heal and I want to know what the evidence-based research shows. Yeah. 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 Do you have something to share? I thought you were, you were about to blow our mind about colonics. I'll tell you what yeah. I think. Yeah. But yeah, I wanted I to give you a chance if you had any opinions. Um, I'm, I'm kind of on the same page as, as Sophie. You know, healing through when you eat a whole foods, plant-based diet yes. and you're pretty much, that is, happens naturally. So, so no. <laughs> 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 but you're right for somebody who's been eating crap for years and years and years I think that that could be an option to and not often right 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 maybe you're once not to di- kind of get but the thing is you're not going to dislodge anything yeah, I don't know are you I don't know I'm dying to hear what yeah 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 come on I'll go you have so, clearly had them and they've worked for you yeah and well what what's happened is we've interviewed so many people in, on the podcast who have had a positive experience and it's always people who are dealing with something life-threatening or very mm. chronic So we're sitting here, we've all taken our own journeys and gone to where we are, and we're eating a whole foods plant-based diet. Yay! But what about the people who just have to start somewhere? So I've been on a five-day cleanse in Palm Springs, which you may (laughs) have. I know! I know the place you're talking about! (laughs) And there's a lot of film stars that go to this place. Yes. Celebrities. It's very trendy. And I have done it, and I felt like a million bucks afterwards. And what happened was, is some of the people that I went with, we stayed in touch via email. 
and they are thriving. They have gotten rid of their chronic pain, their diabetes, all kinds of things. It's not because they do these things every day, but that was their jump start. Mm -hmm. And I've interviewed cancer patients who that was their jump start because I believe the gut is the second brain. The gut needs to be healthy AF, right? Absolutely. But we don't also want to abuse it because there's a lot of stories. This is why I asked that because, you know, the person who asked the question, I didn't go, their their thing was like a huge email of paragraphs. Like, well, some people online say this and some people believe you can get addicted to this and blah, blah, blah. And look, as long as you're not addicted and it is a temporary short term help to get you to that next level, I have no problem with it. I think it is super healing, but it is not something to be practiced on a regular basis. That's my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. But I think that it can absolutely help jumpstart people's health. I agree. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So ladies, all of us are blondes in here. Are we all natural or do we die? Tell the truth. Oh, I so die. I so die. I am so not girly and I do not die. Oh, you are I'm so oh, natural. Oh, I thought thank, you were natural. <laughs> thank goodness. So, I mean, I do not do my nail. I'm sad like that. Like, I haven't cut my hair in a year. What I do is just take it, my ponytail over the sink and I just. Oh, I wow. I love that you're so low maintenance. I, know. I am so low maintenance. I want to be you. you. I want to be you as well. Oh. I'd be a disaster. Yeah, I'm, I'm fortunate. Yeah. You look amazing. amazing. Thank you. Thank you. And so Gloria asks, and Gloria is our mutual friend from Sophie's amazing retreat. She asks, what are some great green products for hair, like hair serum and styling products? And we can give brands. Like, what do you guys know? What do you guys think? Two that I love, my two favorite current ones, are one by a brand called Evolve H. Have you heard of Evolve H? Uh -uh. Oh, my God. Gosh, they do a kit, a, like a sort of beginner's kit, where people have seen extraordinary results, but they're completely green, non-toxic. But the the thinking behind it, the guy that, that created the whole thing was that most green brands, which is true, out there at the health food store really don't perform like a salon brand. Got it. So he wanted to create something, and he did. So it's Evolve, E V O L. Evolve H, Evolve H. And the other one that I absolutely love is Bogavia. Have you heard of Bogavia? Mm-hmm. Oh I'm, I'm Googling gosh. them right now as you speak. <laughs> so so Bogavia is a brand that's sold at a store. That's it. You've got it there. So she does a shampoo, a conditioner, and a serum. And I thought, nah. And she herself, the girl that created it, who's so beautiful, if you see her picture, she's got like hair down to her waist. And I was a bit tempted because she said, oh, I use this in my hair and you know, and she's so, I'm doing her accent wrong. Right. <laughs> she's kind of very sort of sexy, sultry, like I definitely wanted to be her for yeah, that yeah, moment yeah. in time. And anyway, so I sort of thought, well, I'll just buy the Kool-Aid and do it. But gotta say, pretty incredible stuff. Do you have any, I know you're low maintenance. Do you have any shampoo and conditioner recommendations? She uses dish soap. <laughs> 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 well, I'm so glad she asked that question. I'm so you, glad you answered it, Sophie, <laughs> because, yeah, no, but it's true, though, in, in the whole Whole Foods or the natural products, they don't seem to do much. I mean, I, I hate to say that, but so, no, I hadn't really found anything that in my 30, almost eight years that I really love. So I can't wait to try those things. I'll have to get some to you. Yes. 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 So I don't use hair products except shampoo and conditioner. I don't really seem to have a need for it. My hair will hold the curl decently so I don't use anything unless it's like a red carpet event and they just like spray me I'm like whatever but I don't use anything at home you don't no but my favorite products for a shampoo and conditioner that has made my hair really restored and helped it grow longer and helps me brush it if it's wet is EO products so I oh. use the French lavender they have a few different flavors but it's literally delicious it's like gluten-free organics and Aesthetic free, you know, fragrance free. It's like scented by pure essential oils. I use their lotion. Yes. Yeah, their oh lotion. I use their hand sanitizers. And it's really well priced as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I have it on auto ship. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it comes from Target and I'm just like, all right, it's going to auto ship once a month. Sometimes I make it faster. Sometimes it make it slower depending on how much I'm using, but it's the best. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, so this is another one from our Facebook group, and I know a lot of people can relate to this. And I know I have a lot to say. What do you girls think? She says, how does one kick a Starbucks addiction? She says, I'm half kidding, but half not. So I think this is serious. Yeah. How do we kick a Starbucks addiction? Well, it's first off, I would say, is it a coffee addiction or a Starbucks? Because if it's a coffee addiction and you don't want to have coffee and all that caffeine, then that is that there's sort of two different things here. But the one thing I will say is I, I'm not a coffee drinker, but I don't think there's anything wrong with coffee drinking. But I think whether you drink tea or coffee or whatever coffee shop you go to, you got to look at the quality. So I look at it yeah. from both the quality and an eco-friendly perspective and a price perspective. So for me, if I buy, which I do, really good quality tea, I buy loose teas and I buy really good organic coffee for my husband. He's a coffee drinker. And we make it at home and we have reusable mugs that we can take with us during the day. If you do price per cup for that compared to the five or six bucks that you'll, or four bucks at the coffee shop, right. which oftentimes, here's the thing, even if you ask for plant-based milk, the plant-based milk often is sweetened. It has a lot of sugar in it. If you ask for a, a matcha thingy, it's powder, which is chock full of uh, sugar. Right. So it's win-win. You save the environment because you're not using paper. You're using your reusable mug. You save your health because you're creating, you can afford, even if you buy really expensive organic loose tea or really expensive coffee, you still, it's going to be like 30 cents a cup. So you're saving a lot of money. So that's pretty much the way that, that I swing it. It's eco-friendly, it's money saving, and it's health if you make it at home. So I would say rather than thinking, I can't go, I've got to kick the habit, think about what you're going to gain through making your tea or coffee at home. Yes, absolutely. So that is exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> but it isn't um, non-organic coffee is one of the most highly pesticide ridden plants that right. you can mm-hmm. get. And, and so toxic wise it is really awful for you so again it's it's looking at what what's that doing for you how's that making you feel what's it going to do to you long term so to make decisions based on that yes the environment the money like all of it it goes together yes and making that decision i i found that coffee didn't work for me yeah, like me digestion too. wise it me just too. made me jittery and then i would crash and Same. my stomach would feel funky Same. I started drinking those little matcha, the tea shots. Yeah. Ooh. Have you ever had those? Yeah. I, They're intense, like in terms of the, the caffeine, because I'm, I'm somebody I like to... You like yes. the caffeine? Yeah, I yeah. Yeah. Too. <laughs> caffeine. We are the same person. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> and we're on either side of the country, so we need to spend half yes. the time in LA, half the time in Miami. Exactly. I think that's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, I just love how those make me feel. Me they too. They don't taste very good, but that's not what oh, it's about. But you can about. make it taste You can good. make it taste decent but for me i don't do it for the taste have you ever had a highball Mm -mm. Mm -mm. h-i-b-a-l-l they have um completely sugar no sugar no artificial sweetener it tastes exactly like sparkling water and I love the grapefruit, and I'm going to promote them. I'm not getting paid by them, but I love this drink as, oh. a, as a kind of special treat. But there's no sugar. It's made with B vitamins, um, caffeine, guarana, ginseng, and all the B vitamins, like I said. So you're, you're getting some vitamins. There's no sweetness to it whatsoever, and it, it gives you great kicks. So oh, I'm glad. It's refreshing. You told us about it's that. so refreshing. That's awesome. Yeah. They send me a case because I talk about them so often. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. I just pulled I'm up their start website. talking about them often. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe you can have them at your event. I mean, these yeah, are good. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. No, you got, yeah, you got to check it out. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So I would say to anyone who's addicted to Starbucks, like, first of all, just like Sophie said, what can you have at home? Because I still like my espresso and I just mix it with some plant based milk, some oatly, and I am so happy. I do not need any of the sweeteners from the coffee shop. And when I do go now, I feel that... Gross afterwards. Oh, God. Yeah. I feel hungover. Yeah. I feel mm-hmm. so... And I didn't used to, but it's because my body got used to being clean. So then when I tried to go back once in a while and be like, okay, I'll have this once in a while. It'll be my cheat day. Nope. I felt like shit. It's, it's so true. Like yeah. when I've been on a job or on a set or something and they'll go to a Starbucks round. Right, right, And I'll just right. go, oh, I'll have, you know, a soy latte or whatever. But I just feel grotesque afterwards. Yes. It's just that sugar film in your mouth. Mm-hmm. You feel jittery. Yes. Yes. It's yes. just not worth it. Yeah, and there's so many good alternatives now. Like before that we started the recording, we were talking about Four Stigmatic. Oh, I love Four Stigmatic. Oh, They're I coming should've... to my event. Oh, yay! 
They I are. just started taking. I love yeah. it. Oh. oh my god! And I've just noticed that a bit off the coffee topic, but they now have this new thing. I just saw it online today, which is the ten mushroom powder. Mm. Ten mushrooms, and you can just throw a scoop in your smoothie. But their coffees are so. So good. good. Yes. And they don't hurt my stomach. No, no. Right. I had one this morning. At all. Fantastic. Yeah. It's just like a little instant, it's like old style instant coffee. Yes. In a little pouch, stick it, you know, a little bit of hot water. Great for travel, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Totally. Only milk in there. Oh. Yes. So that's what I did. So they sent us a shipment the other day and I literally made it and I put the oatly milk and I blended it with some oil, some coconut oil. And it was a perfect little latte. Yes. Mm-hmm. Delicious. I should have made us some today. Oh. <laughs> oh, yes. I'll make it next time, ladies. I was saying when it, when you use a, a quite a bit of the milk, it, to me it tastes like cream of mushroom. Yeah, it's cream. Yes. I love cream of mushroom <laughs> soup. So yes. it's like something oh, different. It's so good. Yes. And if you're listening and you still are trying to figure out how to kick the Starbucks habit, let's just put this in your ears right now that Starbucks is super chemical laden. So I'm sorry, I don't like to talk bad about brands, but this is all over the news. Um, a lot has come out in 2018. I'm not going to speak to it, but you know, there is a chemical, it's called acrylimonade. I don't know how to pronounce it. Please Google it on your own. But this is something you don't want in your body. So if you're doing this every day, this is something you want to stop and make a treat. Also, if you remember a couple of our episodes ago, we had on someone who was an expert on getting pregnant. And it turns out that there is a chemical in the top of the Starbucks cups that is an endocrine disruptor. So she's literally charging people to be her client and she will help you get pregnant. And sometimes the number one thing, all they have to do is stop drinking Starbucks every day out of that Are you serious? Cup. And it's not dead BPA, serious. it's something different. I forget what it is. I should have done my research before trying to answer this question. Ah, so interesting. Um, yeah, so I'll try wow. to figure out exactly what it is. But listen, you if you're going to the coffee shop or anywhere anyways, bring your really usable bottle, mm-hmm. bring something from home because A, it's better for the environment and B, you don't know what chemicals you're drinking out of that hot cup, then everything, all the plastics or whatever's in there, BPAs are seeping into your drink. So let's say you chose the healthiest drink. You're like, I've got a green tea with plant-based milk, but you're drinking out out of plastic or something, styrofoam, something like that. You're still getting chemicals. So we're trying to be as chemical free and healthy as possible. So that's just another thing to think about when you're trying to you know, make these decisions plant-based choices Mm -hmm. so interesting yeah fascinating yes all right let's go to another question does anyone drink aloe vera gel so she says i bought some lily of the desert and was wondering if anyone has used this and seen any benefit what do we think about aloe vera I actually like it a lot. You can you can use the gel or the juice. The juice is a little easier to, to drink, frankly. The gel is a little bit like, whoa, I'm drinking like je- literally like jelly. Yeah. But you can. You can blend it up. Here's the thing. I, I'll tell you what aloe vera is so good for. If you ever have food poisoning, I've only been a vegan for about four years. And I'd say about six years ago, hello, the only times I've had food poisoning have been through meat. Anyway, it was recommended to me to drink a bunch of aloe vera juice. And it really, A, it flushes you out and B, it coats your intestinal tract. Mm. It just helps with the sort of mucosa. So it's really great. And in little amounts, you could, it's delicious. I, I think on my blog, I've got a blog with a recipe of a lemonade that I put a little bit of aloe in and mint and it's just delicious Mm. but I would caution the only thing I would caution is don't drink too much of it that's the only thing and some people can be highly allergic to it so you've got to be a bit careful yeah I've heard about people overdoing it and and so but I'm I'm not going to talk out of my ass I know I really don't know much about it (laughs) (laughs) no that's the best answer I don't know you know do your research figure it out on your own I know that it's really good for um, digestion and helping people who are maybe a little bit backed up so it's something worth experimenting with but I I agree. I don't know enough about it. So I wanted to ask other ladies who may have some sort of opinion on it. But before we wrap up today, we get a lot of questions about a couple of things. So I would love for you both just to give us a little perspective on how you help people through this. So whether it's a disordered eating cycle or a food addiction, what are some things that people can do to move past that and move into like a healthy relationship with our food? 
and vegans too. You know, like, sorry, I just want a side note. It doesn't mean that as soon as you go plant powered or you change your diet, you're immediately Mm -hmm. rid of your food addictions or you're really immediately rid of overeating or a a disorder like anorexic or Or orthorexic. orthorexic. Yeah. So there are so many things. And I know this is a deep topic that I shouldn't leave till the end because we could go about this all day, but I have gotten some questions lately. So I would just love your perspective on that. Uh, Yeah. So this is, this is huge. And this is what I'm really focusing on at this point in my career, Mm -hmm. because I did go for probably, I think maybe 12 years with disordered eating cycles and I hid it. And I think that's what a lot of people do is hide it because it's shameful. Um, when you're doing the restricting and then binging. I mean, I, I went, <laughs> I would eat an entire jar of peanut butter mm-hmm. because I would restrict, restrict, restrict. And then at night I'd be like, oh, I got to have something. And then I would get, and it, and it, it really does come back to self-love. Yeah. And that's, so that's what, it's not about the food. Right. You know, food is a symptom when it comes to disordered eating. Mm-hmm. So to empower yourself through self-love. So this is what we do, and it's not an easy process. And it's not a quick process. This is something that takes a long time, which is why my program is 12 weeks long. Mm -hmm. Because we have to start with looking at, at what you value in life, exploring your story about yourself, exploring the love or hate that you have or shame that you have, being willing to get vulnerable. When I had that issue, I was vegan, you know, because I've been vegan 20, 30 years. Yeah. So I felt like I had to be the shining example of the perfect vegan. Right, right. Because people didn't even know what vegan was, and they blamed everything. If there was something wrong with me, it was because I was vegan. If Uh I got a cold, it's because you're vegan. You Uh don't know your meat, you know? If you got an injury, oh, you're not healing because you're vegan. You don't have protein. And you don't have enough protein, (laughs) yes. You're not getting your nutrients. And I'm like, what? So... I really felt like I had to be perfect. Mm -hmm. So I had this whole perfectionist thing going, and that has a big piece of it too. So it's a process of really exploring yourself. I teach what I call the self-empowerment coaching model, and it really teaches you to take a step back to observe your feelings and then the thoughts behind those feelings, to explore them, to allow negative emotion sometimes without acting on it, mm. and then learning how to how to turn your thoughts around, which is a process. Sure. So yeah, it's it's a process of of really exploring and learning to love yourself and realizing that food is the symptom when it comes to this these disordered eating cycles. I love that. Thank you so much for the work that you're doing Mm -hmm. and for being vulnerable and admitting the truth. Like I'm the same way. Like I went plant powered and then I realized I still have food addictions to this day. I can say I have a food addiction to sugar and I'm working on it, but it ain't easy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sophie, what's been your experience? What advice would you give? You know, I, I, again, we're the same person, uh, um, for sure. (laughs) I But, and I so appreciate your approach. I think it's so refreshing and beautiful. And, you know, and I hope that you're reaching a lot of, you know, young girls who really struggle with this. It's just interesting, the addiction thing. I've worked a lot in the field of addiction, actually helping a lot of people, not necessarily with food addictions, but with other kinds of addictions. And, you know, I think that, and and, and this is where I think you and I are very much on the same page. We're just sort of framing it slightly differently is for me, it's about mindfulness. Mm -hmm. And it is, you know, if you can, if you can find some way of becoming quiet, I teach a lot of mindful meditation, and or or certainly that the the sort of program that I teach and always take on all of my retreats is about becoming still enough Mm -hmm. to listen to what's going on, which is basically what you're talking about. And if you can sit before you launch into your story or your addiction or your urges and you can sit and you can have the courage to face what's going on and to face the demon and to, and to face what what is, as you said, what is underneath that. Because I think so often we live by these labels and our stories and the labels, I've got a food addiction or I'm just a complete mess or I can't stop or whatever it is. And it's like, let's just take, let's go deeper. Let's get still enough. Let's have the courage to go within because we spend so much time as women and as young girls from the 
external from Instagram and the pictures and just generally as women we're movers shakers fixers we're doing getting pushing you know type A (laughs) and then and sometimes that type A is about cramming in tamping it down so I don't have to feel the pain and like you my darling I 100% am a cheerleader of feel the pain go into it because if you face the monster you're going to find there isn't a monster there and then you can learn that underneath that is just love so well said. <laughs> I love it. And you can protect yourself from the monster. So for me, I do a kind of inner child self-love meditation. And I don't do it every day, but it's something I practice regularly. I have my list of songs and I go back and I go, what is this really about? So sometimes it'll be writing and figure, I feel this. When's the first time I felt this? Oh, when dad said this. Oh, when the person on the playground said this. And things come to you, okay? Mm-hmm. And it's a really healing practice. And so sometimes instead of going and eating that carton of ice cream or whatever that food addiction is calling me to do at that time, it is sit down, write it down. And it's not easy. I'm not saying it. I'm just like, no. Never mind, ice cream. Let's go (laughs) journal. It's like, I have to make a conscious decision not to do that. Even if it's a vegan ice cream, I still have to make the conscious conscious decision to choose better. So once I do my whole thing, I might cry. Something might come out of it. But each time, I think I'm shifting a little bit higher in my healing. And so that next time, I'll eat a little bit less of that ice cream. And when I'm done, if I still want the plant-based ice cream, I'm going to go eat it. But usually I don't. That is just beautiful. And I have to say that I have a 16-year-old daughter. And the other night, she was saying she wanted something, these cookies. And my husband had thrown them away. He was like, she can't. She's going to eat the whole thing of cookies. (laughs) So he threw them away. She said to both of us, do you know where those cookies are? And I said... Um, I said, they're, they're in the trash can. Dad threw them away. And she was really, really agitated, really. And she's very stressed out right now. She's a junior in high school. She was like, Mom, I, you know, I really want... And I said, okay, that's fine. Feel, what's going on? You know, right. feel it and everything. And she said, because they, it makes me happy. And it was so good that she got to that and that she got, and I let, we let her have it. I didn't make that wrong. Mm -hmm. It's like, of course that makes you happy. It's delicious. Mm -hmm. You know, that's okay. But I said, you know, maybe you can start learning to find something in you that might be a little different that makes you happy. Oh, (laughs) mom. But, you know, it's great. I love that I can have these conversations with her. And the most important thing, and I hope you think that I'm on the right track here because, you know, you you work with so many women on this, is that I never shame her. I never blame her. And I never make her wrong. And I'd rather that she can feel that she can openly go, it makes me feel good when I'm feeling down. And I'm like, yeah, of course it does. I love that. Let's chat about it. Never. And I never stop her. If she wants to eat the big packet of Tate's cookies, I mean, I didn't throw them away. My husband did, blaming him. But most of the time, I let her eat what she wants to. One, one of my mantras is play life like a game. Ooh. So this kind of oh. takes it to a different level. And this is not something that's easy to do at first when you're learning these tools about taking that step back and acknowledging and not doing it, like you said, doing things mindfully. Mm-hmm. So you have to get to kind of a certain level. But once I did, and I knew I was taking everything so seriously in my life because I'm very type A. I'm very, you know, about taking care of everybody else. And I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play life like a game. What is the point of being stressed out all the time? And when you start to envision it like that, exploring who you are and exploring your thoughts, yeah. like almost like a game. And what move am I going to make? And that's my chess piece to move. And I can't move anybody else's. All I can do is move mine. And where am I going to take that? And what's going to be next? And just kind of taking some pressure off. And it's just this approach to life that I've started taking in the last couple years since I started being vulnerable about my experiences and saying, you know what, I'm not perfect. I'm far from perfect. And here's why. And all these people can now relate to me. And I can help because I've been able to take it to the next step. So yeah, play life like a game. I just, I, for me, that works really well as a mantra. Okay. You've touched on something that's so profound because I so agree with you. I've always, my mantra is, is wear life like a loose garment because but why it's so profound, what you just said, I think is because you're not your thoughts, your story, your actions, your right. work, your life. And what you're basically, what you've done is you've made that separation. So suddenly you've moved into the stillness and your power and you're the observer. Mm-hmm. 
and you're observing. Oh, isn't that? And that's in a way what kind of meditation teaches. But isn't it funny that thing that I did, or is it that pattern that I do, or what about that? And you're looking at it with kind of love and amusement and interest, rather than identifying with it and thinking this is me because it's not you. Yes, we're yes. not. We're all just pure love and consciousness yes. who are playing out our games yes. or our stories. Yes. <laughs> so thank Ooh, you. Yes, I need to spend <laughs> hours with you and Alison every Yay. single day. Really. Yeah. Yes, I always say approach yourself with compassion, kindness, and curiosity. Yes. You know? And curiosity. You, and then you can allow, you, you, we're not supposed to be happy all the time. How do we, how are we going to be happy if we don't have sadness? Yeah. Why would we be happy if somebody dies that we love? Like there are times we are not supposed to be happy and that's okay. Yeah. So to not be so, in, to, to be the observer, yeah. like you said, to be able to take a step back and say, I'm feeling this way and these are the thoughts behind it and that's okay. I can sit in that. It doesn't mean I have to go eat a jar of peanut butter. Okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but if you want to, but if that's I want the to. game that you chose to play that day. And, and that's, that's okay. Fine. Yes. 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 And honor yourself in that moment. Be like, I'm doing this and I'm and happy it, yeah. about Taste, it. Not, yeah. I'm guilty. I'm yes. shameful. Yes. I'm yes. angry. I'm blah, yes. blah, blah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, <laughs> ladies, this has been so much fun. I could talk to you both for hours, but we've got to wrap up. Ella, tell everyone how they can find you online, work with you, all that good stuff. Sexyfitvegan.com. If you add a forward slash masterclass, you can go find my free masterclass. It's a great starting point to kind of understand my philosophies and how I work with clients. If it resonates with you, you'll be able to schedule a call and, and we can talk about my uh, plant empowered coaching program. Yes. And if you want to hear her original story the whole thing is in episode 97 so if you're new to the podcast go back listen to that episode we had a fun conversation about how Ella used to be in Chapel Hill North Carolina on the streets in cages showing people (laughs) how it was to be a caged animal she has been fighting this fight longer than anyone I know and I'm so proud to be her friend thank you so much for being here I'm so honored thank you and Sophie where can everyone find you online well the easiest place to go is my website which is Sophie Yule Juliano.com. And on there, you can reach all the other myriad of YouTube channels and social media and found out about all my upcoming events and retreats. Yes, you have beautiful retreats. You have some of my favorite books out there. The Gorgeously Green series you just have to read. Ella's book is called Six Weeks to Sexy Abs. These books will change your life. Thank you, ladies, so much for being here. See you next time, Food Heals Nation. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to actually start using their $39.99 a month gym membership. If you experience any of these symptoms, Snapchat your trainer immediately.